Thank you very much and a warm welcome to all the people that have added and are part of this digital fair, the first uh, digital fair, more rural and more digital, promoting the positioning of digitalization in the region. And as we mentioned, this roundtable has a focus on how this digitalization processes in the rural world have seen its development with a focus in family agriculture and that they are creating the basis for the sustainable development. In that sense, we would like to thank and again to uh, present our commitment and uh, thanks to our presenters for sharing their experiences and also for developing in this challenging area. Today, we will have on the table some aspects that we have identified as relevant and also to recognize the great effort that is being done in different parts of our continent to promote digitalization in the rural area, recognizing that this demands an accelerated process to close the gaps. In that sense, I would like to introduce briefly the three groups of panelists that we will have in this table that are with us. We have the National Service of uh, Learning, SENA, uh, Mrs. Maria Gudelo Berrios, from the experience of Brazil, Mr. Carvalho, and from Uruguay, Ms. Mr. Eduardo Elizalde and Bernardo Ramos. These three presentations, these three panelists will share a balance of evaluation they have done from their experience in digitalization processes for family agriculture in different phases of family agriculture. From the productive part, the trading and the development of capacities to access to the services. With further ado, just to remind you that each one of the speakers will have 12 minutes for their interventions. And in the end of the three presentations, we will have a Q&A session and we will invite the people that are part of this round table so they can gather their comments and questions so we can ask them at the end. So with that, I would like to offer the floor to Maria Damaris. You have the floor and I will be the role to control the time to guarantee the compliance of the panel. So the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much. Good afternoon. So to begin the introduction that the goal of the challenge of digitalization in the world that we live in currently, the rural development processes that we have makes it necessary that in the rural areas with the producer, we have these challenges. And to put it in a context, according to each territory, this needs of promoting the development in the rural areas. So there are important stakeholders like the need to have productive systems that are sustainable, to develop a productive system that are efficient, not only economically, but also socially and environmentally friendly. So the producers uh, might need these links to promote the systems and to develop trading systems. So there is also an important point that I think would be the basis for everyone and for the planet and the need of food security or food sovereignty that allow the importance to have the uh, peasant organization for this rural development. So these production models should be efficient, non-pollutant, and also to use technologies that um, the countryside can connect to the cities and to have a present and in a context in the different countries, like uh, in different stages in, of development, like Latin America. 
it's not foreign that the Colombian countryside, not all our producers are connected. So I think there is a point and there is a weakness because there are no connection in all the rural areas. Besides that, intelligent uh, devices like a mobile phone also can help us to connect the peasants with the productive systems and the institutions and the organizations they accompany the development processes. So we have to begin first from, from this connection of internet on one hand, that in some municipalities, uh, for example, the Department of Antioquia, in the city we have the disconnections in the municipalities have internet connections that are completely free where any person can have access to those networks with for free but when we go out of these uh, municipalities when we go to the countryside we see that there is a problem in the access this on one hand so the connection is one of the factors that we have to tackle the other one is uh, digital education, both for the technical professionals. We have to begin with them, the digital education to promote the management of these tools that allow to transfer the knowledge to the producers that do not have the capacities. So we have to have this education, digital education process and to allow the access so um, the peasants can reach and we can do strategic alliances with the institutions to have alliances so the municipalities will be the head with the development secretariats of the rural areas and the planning so we can uh, have zones for the different producers to be able to reach to these people. So this digitalization or this education, can all, we can also have also a census of producers to align them in strategic lines or groups uh, of organized producers. So this information and this zoning is important and also to know who has the land so the producers get access to resources. So this will allow that in this databases, we can have relevant information to accompany these people. Obviously, to have topics like agriculture, tools for support and um, digital marketing can help us and they are important. But beyond that, it's important to see the context, the context in the countryside. We can have the spaces for development so they can reach and they can have a sustainable family uh, economy through these processes. So we have to see how we link so the institutions, organizations that support this type of projects and uh, family agriculture can have the impact and the impact has to have an effect in a sustainable development and also to have networks where the productive systems are sustainable through time and not only through the inclusion of projects that are developed in record time. And sometimes the producers uh, stay in the same condition. So we need to have clear policies according to the development niche in each zone. So it's important to look at that. The uses of the land, the traditions and the zonifications for the producers. So that should have an effect and like to have a marketing network that promote the products 
and also with value added. So the process of the input insight also processes to transform, to generate new products so we can have marketing networks among the producers. So we should have an integration. So with that, we can have databases with the institutions to reach through their objectives and projects to accompany these uh, processes in the rural sector. This will promote also to strengthen the technical capacities, to strengthen these productive sectors that can be more profitable and also to have a more organized, a more trained product because through this digitalization, we can also um, strengthen the administrative capacities. So generating an autonomy in their economic development. So thinking in all this time where we have a climatic change that we have suffered already in Colombia, we have been severely hit by this winter. So we see that they're suffering in the productive se sectors, the soils, uh, uh, we have uh, floods and avalanches and that have uh, stopped to develop normally the, the production systems. So in front of these scenarios and in front of an important global development, because we know that the development with, uh, with territorial approach is important, where basically we have to be organized and to end well, for example, we have work, I work in the National Service of Planning and Design, a government institution where all the Com Colombians, we have the possibility to access to the training for the work in all the disciplinary areas. So in the primary sector, in the agricultural sector, we have the alliances with the municipalities so they can have databases of the producer. For example, with the municipality of Medellin, they have five departments in the rural area that allow them through the development secretariat in agriculture, they can have a census of the producers and put them in groups where their habitat and to put them around the production line. So in this way, as a training institution, we can support them in the technical topics. So we accompany the producers in the field through this um, field schools where we promote the strengthening of the technical capacities. And here we extend and accompany with the professionals so we can close technical gaps in a company in this organizational strengthening to promote also with the other stakeholders these lines of uh, trading for their products so we can have a good uh, product um, development of the family economy and the agricultural economy. Thank you, Maria Damaris, for the experience that you have shared and she is leader of the AgroSen experience. So she has, she has shared this uh, vision of digitalization process to enable public policies with a territorial approach and evaluation of what are the main demands to generate spaces and opportunities that expand the economy and the digital capacities of the family agriculture to take advantage of this potential and to keep contributing to the demands of the agricultural systems that are so challenging. So there is so much that we can keep learning of the experience of AgroSena. Thank you very much. And let's leave for the question and answers that we will have at the end of the panel of the round table. To continue, I would like to offer uh, Mr. Carvalho, who is the CEO of Elite Farm, 
which is um, a company devoted to promote digitalization. He's an engineer, and he has worked also with the FAO and the World Food Program. So you have 12 minutes, and if it's necessary, I will let you know. So you have the floor. Good afternoon. First of all, to thank to this invitation and the agriculture for this work, because without them, we will not have no consideration. I would like also to greet the participants, and especially Maria, that helped me with the presentation from the context that we have. And this is not a specific uh, situation of one country or a specific region. I would like to share my screen. I don't know if you can see it. OK, um, can you let me know if you can see it? OK. So what I wanted to bring here, and it's the family agriculture. There are some needs that we have to see. This is the agriculture 10 years ago is not the same. Uh, maybe there are different means and technologies. And the same happens with what happened 20 years. I speak because I am a son of family agricultures. So the context uh, was one. And now there are different opportunities and challenges that are different than the ones from 20 or 30 years ago. In transformation, the reality is more or less like this. The family agricultures in the majority are people over 50 years old or 60 years old, which limits a bit their working capacity in the rural areas. So this also limits the, uh, the size. And often, they do not have a support in the sense of teams or equipment or low cost technology that diminish the efforts that they have to do in the farms. So that's why young people don't want to participate in this process because they see as a limitation. It's better to go to the cities to try to find work uh, in a motor taxis or working in, um, in trade than be remaining in the property. It's better to have a condition uh, to go. Or in the best cases, they go out to study. The young people, they go to a technical school or the university, and then they are hired by other companies. And, and then they'll look back at the businesses of their parents. So to work in this context, then we have limited labor or scarce where we have a place where there is no, they don't know how to make this different. So basically what we think, this is one of the challenges. And I think to look at agriculture, I like to compare is to see an economic activity that has a high impact. Here, I'm going to make a comparison that makes uh, seems simple. But if you are baking bread, he has 365 days of work, like the farmer. But every day, he can have a different variable. He can make uh, try new processes. If we say th uh, that the baker has 40 years of experience, so he has tried 14,000 times to make bread. The agriculture, no. The farmer, no. He has 40 attempts, one attempt per year, one harvest per year, uh, and one, ha one harvest in summer and one harvest in the winter. So how this um, capital that has in been invested can have a product so they can uh, have a good uh, return because they are subject to droughts. And also, uh, if there is no rain, or as you can see in the map, there is a red area that never has rain. So obviously, 
we have also the problems related uh, to the management of insects and plagues. So agriculture is too important to think it as not a need to work specifically within the best standards and the best practices. So Life Farm was born to think how to improve the development and to accelerate this access to technologies that increase the productivity of the farmer, that increase their capacity to be in an adequate working condition and to have better conditions. So when we ask about axing digital means, this is what happens with other technologies. They need connectivity and they are no, there's no connectivity in the farms. The problem is that the operators like the phone operators have internet of, for one person and one phone. But in the farm or in the countryside, we can have information from the soil, from the plants, from the rain, from the uh, amount of animals. What would happen if an animal would have a GPS, for example, to confirm that this animal uh, has affected a deforestation that is in an area that was not recently open uh, as a pasture. So what type of data do you want to generate and what amount of other volumes of information we can have that goes beyond the people so we can talk with these operators and to show that the competitivity of the agricultural market is uh, based on the environment, what it is, and not only of the person that is going to have a phone. Because if we only speak about a person, we are going to um, take 10 or 15 more years. So we're speaking about simple practices. If we plant, what should be the condition for to plant the seeds? How to make the standard? How to diversify? the sources of income and the technologies to support the sustainability, the small appliances that we can use, like this is the case of this one that the plants that changes for a wheel system that has for um, manure and for seeds and that creates this standardized and here you can see the comparison of what this uh, equipment versus the manual uh, planting. We're speaking about 10 times faster, more standardized and with better quality for the crops. Here, just an image, see of one of our clients that use this equipment so you can see the standard of the crop. And the person that has 50 years with a small capacity to do three or four hectares, he now can do it because he is not able to invest more in labor. So technologies of this level of what we're speaking to, to make this conversions also for another area that demands a lot of labor is for also for the harvesting. For example, for corn, we have developing a system of one line of corn that it's not necessary to have a tractor to invest thirty, forty thousand dollars to harvest. And the same, for example, for the cotton that can be a technology to improve the capacity to invite young people and women to work and also to have less, less effort. And there's another technology in, within the harvesting, which is for the plague control. And what I'm going is to find how to produce a discussion. So which type of technologies and which type of transitions we can make. And beyond uh, machines and small appliances, we are speaking that there is a big space to change agriculture in small 
in small and uh, medium scale. So in small and medium producers and cooperatives, how to standardize to have tractors with high level of precision. This, what you can see here, is a tractor of 40 years ago that we installed the automatic pilot that we have. And with this system, there is a connection with the GPS and more or less uh, the tractor is making the positioning to go online and it has a mistake of two to three centimeters. And why is this important? And this is an area that was using a tractor in one of our plots. And you are going to see an area of 100 hectares, 100 hectares. If the tractor uh, gets a mistake in 10 centimeters in each uh, loop it makes, the agriculture or the farmer has lost more than a thousand kilos, more than a ton, only because he was uh, uh, planting in bigger spaces. So how to improve productivity per area? It's just making an adjustment to minimize human mistake. So as you can see here, this is where we have to make the new line. And with this system, we would have the adequate precision and you will not make mistakes into having lines with different measurements. And this is how you can improve productivity. This is another line of equipment that we must be promoting. And for here, we have the last line. The last one is a system to monitor plagues, a technology we can use for any type of crop or place where there is an artificial intelligence that identify and sends the information. And this will be the basis for the localized control. And why is this important? Because this is a trap for cotton to monitor one of the plagues. And when the insect goes into the trap, we count the insect and we transmit in real time how many insects uh, when it has uh, entered. And we can eliminate the costs of, we're speaking of a space to insert biological places because smaller population of plagues we can use biological use uh, products. So this is an area in red would be how to make three fumigations of uh, with insecticides. This is the system that we do now where all the week a person has to do to go to buy uh, these chemicals and then he makes an average and we can apply this. But our system, you have a clear indication that it's not the whole neighborhood that has the insects. The focus would be more on this. This is the picture of, of day one and how they could have been controlled the area. If it took me a week to go there manually, in a week, the situation would be different, would be this one. In fact, the uh, amount of plague was increased due to a problem that they did not give an answer in the adequate time. So we're saying that technology comes to bring answers to the producers and so they can move forward and to have a better condition to plan, to harvest, and to be more sustainable. So this is what I would like to speak in this range of technologies and the spaces that we have discussed. And I am open for any question. Thank you very much for your information and for being so punctual. Thank you so much. 
I would like to mention a couple of things that you from your presentation that I thought was very important is this thing about resolving problems and focusing on that with regard to the family farmers and especially towards improving their working conditions, which is not always seen with that point of view from that angle. And this is definitely going to improve the efficiency of the systems and the performance. But so long as those conditions, working conditions for those family farmers are concerned, and uh, they the improvement is uh, paramount important. Um, uh, the it, this is not just digital. We need to use other technologies for the different parts of the productive process. I think it has been a quite an interesting presentation of yours. Thank you very much. And now I would like to. Uh, give the floor to the last participant of this panel, which is something that is uh, that comes from Uruguay, Mr. Eduardo Elizalde, who is a, a computer analyst, uh, graduated from the Republic of Uruguay, and also Mr. Bernardo Ramos, a communicator from the University Republic of Uni Uruguay, who is currently responsible of the Communication Human Resources Department. Both of them are part of the Cooperative Rural Union of Uruguay, which is a a, a an organization that offers integral solutions and helps for productive on productive needs of his associates and we want to thank you very much for your experience and the time you're sharing here with us and also would like to reiterate that we have a shared time for you there is 12 minutes in total and i will be controlling and so thank you i give you the floor please go ahead thank you very much Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the Rural Union, a very special thanks to FAO, FAO for having invited us as panelists to be able to share with all of you a little bit of what we have been able to develop at our cooperative and our uh, digitalization process and, and focused on the rural production. And I think uh, we thought it was very good to share with you an additional video here that will show you something more and, and more complete uh, look of the of our services and what we offer and we coordinate. So I'll be happy to, if you could please uh, share the video and then we can continue. Thank you. We are a cooperative uh, business with a very good record and we're based on our values and our trust relationships with the people. And since 1959, we have been working with a firm commitment to our service and pr production, and this allows us to offer integral solutions to the needs of our associates and adapt uh, permanently to the agribusinesses. Our values are based on the cooperative system, and we they are the hub of our actions. And we are convinced of our importance and our impact in, in society. Therefore, we like to promote. And we offer solutions that are oriented and uh, focused on the producer so that we can work together in a seamless way. A rural union of flowers, we understand, for instance, that we need to have successful uh, results uh, to guarantee a successful productivity based with on efficiency and a professional team that will be accompanying you at our cycle and sharing business and experiences to become a strategic ally for the decision making and we are next to the producer at all times right there where you the production begins and ends and grows we have learned what it means for you, the value of your production, and we look at the market every day, we analyze it and we share it in very dynamic context such as today's. We are currently com constantly looking for solid, transparent and secure tools that will allow the producer to make the right decisions right on time. And we think of businesses on the long term and based on mutual trust uh, that will allow the producer to develop its product, its production and with the backing of a very important organization that is committed to offering you the best services and results. And we are aware that the uh, productive activity of our country in the, in the region is de depends on the
infrastructure and a human team that is consolidated and integrated and committed. And we are at your service and we have an excellent operational capacity that can adapt itself to all sorts of productive uh, situations through our services. We, we, we accompany the producer at, in all the stages of the productive cycle and we facilitate efficiency and we guarantee the compliance with the quality standards uh, that have been um, committed to. And we have an, a, an important role both in the marketplace and with the clients. And we are sure that we can improve the productive efficiency of the sector here at the at this cooperative for rural flowers. And we share experiences in the lately. We have incorporated the use of new information and communication technologies, and we adapt them to the needs of the sector. And these tools allow us to be closer to the producer with tracking systems uh, for the pre-production and other commercial systems as well. And that's the reason why we looking to the future, to a better future with the use of technology and caring for the environment and human re and natural resources. And so we are committed to this and our commitment brings us to work very strongly for every with every project for every project. And we want to uh, help impact the community in a positive way. We are we have great challenges and we want to be the best productive tool to allow our producers to strengthen and develop their companies, their businesses in a sustainable way with innovation and adding value to the agribusiness chain. Union de Flores, the, the value of producing together. Union de Flores, it's a flower cooperative. Thank you. I would like to complement the information that we have offered already about the cooperative. This is a, a cooperative that was uh, founded in 1959. It, we have been around for 63 years. We work with 900 producers, out of which 700 are working actively with the cooperative. And the profile of our producers is a medium-sized producer for the uh, the dimensions of the uh, the farming areas in Uruguay, they have about between 100 and 500 hectares each, and they work about 180 co uh, collaborators in this cooperative in all sectors. We are in the flower department, which is the center part of Uruguay, uh, where we're located, and we're going to see another map with the other neighboring departments and the volume in all in all, we have about 44,000 hectares and in, in winter and 551,000 in summer. And we have over 230,000 tons of grain. Basically, our cooperative has certain uh, productive lines, which is um, livestock and agriculture. Livestock, we commercialize in the year about 12,000 12, cows and 18,000 uh, cattle. I'm not going to go into more details about the flowers, but in the latest uh, latest year, last year, we had about $54 million. And this cooperative currently has a net worth, net worth of uh, $91 million. Or, uh, this has to do with our social responsibility. We have a recycling plant for uh, plastic residue wastes and some other projects that are in, in, in along those lines. As you can see, the location on the map of Uruguay, where we concentrate, where we are concentrating, which is more more in the central part of Uruguay, and we have two branches that are in the uh, neighboring departments or provinces, as we I don't know how you call them in your country. Uh, the idea is to tell you a little bit about how what the structure we have is like and. And Eduardo is the uh, is in charge of the systems department. He will tell you in in a summary the processes of digitalization that the, the, the cooperative has developed. And the uh, work of the producer and how everything matches. And uh, well, I'll tell you good afternoon. I'll tell you what we have developed with our producers. We have uh, our starting point is the 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 place where we have all the information about the producer and the way they manage the 
the farming and we uh, annually manage 2,000 farms, which is 77,000 of hectares, productive hectares per year, out of which 68% have two, two crops. And we have about 24,000 registered visits of technicians to the farms. And the average of producers is about 220 hectares per producer. That's the average. All of this information that we have in the system is referenced both for the, the farms as well as the monitoring and the and the records. The verification or the campaigns actually begin with the selection of the farms and the produce to be to be um, uh, used and planted like uh, and all of the things like seeds, export, import and the commercial areas. Uh, for uh, for purchasing of inputs and and the seeds and also for insurance coverages of for those crops and when we monitor the farms uh, we wanted to digitalize because we wanted to share information with the producer and each visit to the chakras we or the farms we have an evaluation and assessment where we can put it put up images and videos on the performance of the crops and the harvest and so on and everything is put in on the site and then when uh, you where this allows us to work on areas where we don't have any connectivity and so they can access it whenever they have connectivity but we monitor we can monitor this on the cell phone or on the web and we can we can also share the web with our producer via whatsapp and so we have our uh, the, the the sales department is also um, a part of the system and so the producer can actually also purchase the the inputs there and when with all the information that is uploaded, we can analyze it and then make decisions. And we have what is most used are, for instance, the progress and the monitoring of the uh, progress of the crops and the. And this is also used for the logistics area and to coordinate all of the logistics that have to do with tools. This uh, logistics team uh, system for seeds and grains, it's an integrated system. And so we use location area. And this allows us to plan when we're going to get the seeds and where we're going to be receiving receiving the seeds. And if in case we're using a certain plant, we'll know at which plant that grain or seed is going to be delivered. During the harvest, the producer uh, requests some help from one for one farm and then they're assigned a transport. And the transport is given the coordinates of the farm and the destination of the load and the ton tonnage. And if it's if it's confirmed, then they are both communicated and and then if there are any changes, the transport has been all the after the unloading, the transport is available for another trip. And so they coordinate amongst themselves. The logistical people have the locations both at the request of the transports and also the simple trucks and so this allows them to further coordinate transportation for the benefit of the far farmers, both for uh, uh, transporting sale uh, seeds and so on, or for purchasing and selling inputs. All of the information that has been put into the application or the request uh, is is there on the form, and then that is shared with others and and the information about quality is also recorded. The producer is has access to all the information, of course, whether from the website. Uh, he can look at uh, statements, 
account statements and other aspects of the business. We know that this is going to improve the management of the cooperative, but we still have some other processes to improve that will allow us to give a better service to the producer. We're right now changing our, uh, we're trying to optimize the cooperative and we're changing our systems also. We're integrating other operators and we're using another electronic platform that will allow us to know before the truck arrives for unloading what where he's coming from and what he's bringing on and from what uh, supplier. So this is for now. It, it just very, sh very in short, I wanted to mention that the area, the communication area of the Department of the Cooperative uh, is important to mention and the use we we make of the digital media, the social networks, and for planning and and for communicating and for marketing with the producers. So we use everything that has to do with the networks that we all already know. And so we are present on all chains and we reach the producer. And so we use WhatsApp in Uruguay, at least. That is very much a universal tool now and amongst the small producers and family farmers and also producers who have a higher profile, more of a business profile, but they're also using the same tools. So it is the most uh, fluid way for communicating with the producers via WhatsApp and so on. And also it has to do, as you see there, the presence of the main social networks and where we uh, also communicate and inform about our th activities and things that we're doing from the cooperative. So that was briefly a, our report about what this is all about. If you have any questions, of course, we are here for uh, resolving any concerns, any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Eduardo and Bernard Mardo in the Rural Union of Flowers. Thank you very much. It's been quite interesting to hear you. I think it's important to highlight how in this particular case, digitalization has come to uh, dynamize the cooperative services that you've already uh, that you're already offering and but at the scale that allows a facilitation of an ease of the whole work and your best practices. And I think that it's very important to see how that productive chain is being linked in different ways. And so now not just the production, but also the commercialization and the education services and other services that are generated within the same uh, entity and the, the pertaining to the activities that you've mentioned. And this is what contributes uh, to goes to strengthening the capacities of the producers for set for a perfect management using digital uh, tools. So right now we are looking at some of the comments and questions from the audience here. And um, I would very much like to ask you to give me a chance at two minute two minutes to consolidate the questions and submit them to you. First of all, some questions are general that we will ask you for to take two minutes per participant for to answer those general questions. I think let's start. I think it's been mentioned uh, within the introductions before we use before we hear from you about the alternatives please from your experience and context both sectorial as territorial what would be the main gaps that you recognize or that you have had to chat to face that are hindrances for the farmers or family farmers to reach or access these uh, tools and digital media uh, we have already discussed that earlier, but maybe you can just summarize the main barriers that we find or main obstacles uh, taking into account and from the perspective of your family farmers in your particular places. Uh, so let's hear from your from our speakers. Well, undoubtedly one of the main gaps that we have in my country is connectivity. 
in reality accessing internet uh, in the rural areas is rather a challenge uh, for the small producers who basically uh, need to overcome this, which is the most important thing, connectivity. And again, the commer commercialization of the products. When we mention development of agriculture and technology implementation, the f small producer cannot implement it that easily. And that's the reason why it's important to have applied technologies that will facilitate things on out in the countryside in the farming areas. And of course, we have a great large percentage of our territory, which is held by a certain number of producers and uh, a very small uh, percentage is pro very productive and therefore efficiency in these areas need to be covered by clear policies. Another uh, important challenge uh, is that there are many groups that are marginal groups and that have they have hindered the access in so that the rural population doesn't really have access to certain territories and bring the technologies to certain territories because of these marginal groups that have been very active. And so th those are some of the important aspects that are really the main main uh, obstacles. OK, thank you, Mariana. Mr. Joel. I think a critical problem for us is. Uh, we need to have more demos. In other words, having pilot programs make uh, the farmers who have who are not very trusting, they can who are uh, not very amenable to these changes or to going for new things. They can have something clear and they can see how the, ben the benefits. And so I think there's a large room for growth there and also in terms of presentations of these new technologies. That is a way of going the way to go. In the end, most of them, once they see the demo, then they realize that they can probably incorporate these technologies. Here in Brazil, we have four million uh, family farmers and we have five million farms and. And these producers that are in the transition between family farming and just full fetch farm that is not just producing for subsistence. Uh, they are going to begin to uh, take risks in these pro in, and assume these new processes. And this is uh, by introducing and pilot programs with them and demos and uh, supported by government or regional uh, policies and supports and associations and cooperatives that actually facilitates the democratization of these kinds of innovations that we currently have for agri farming communities. Thank you very much, Joesio. Maybe Eduardo or Bernardo would like to add something. Well, in our case, frankly, the difficulty for adopting these new things has to do with the generational gap. Generally, the young generations are the ones who can adopt more easily and faster these uh, innovations and these new applications and things that we have uh, mentioned. And with in terms of connectivity, Uruguay in the last few years have improved, has improved very substantially. We're a relatively small country in terms of land and territory extension. And the coverage is rather good in the rural areas. The advantage that we have in our system is that we can work offline and once we catch some good connectivity, we can connect and we can exchange information. And so, as Florencia was saying, from the side of the cooperative, we have been, we are permanently offering demos 
and of course the tools and also remarking and and highlighting everything that we can achieve not just in terms of savings but also in saving time not just money for a productive management thank you very much colleagues i think we have one more question and it's also going to be a general question so that you all can respond to that um, because it has to do with everyone. And so this question has to do with alliances or the players. Well, you know, the farming sector, sometimes we see it like very isolated or sectorized with very specific areas, but who else should be part of this? What other players should we invite? Uh, other sectors of society uh, that could actually be dynamizing these uh, digital technology um, implementation in our region what what do you think and so let's uh, go in the same order well the accompaniment and, and institutional alliances are very important in colombia we do use accompaniment by universe you uh, non-governmental organizations and from the US and from the European Union, we have we have to look at the context, the social context to see. And make sure that the accompaniment is also local, national, regional, not just international in, in the country. And so all of these efforts are very important. And we need to highlight that each one of the institutions with their own objectives for development, for rural development. They need to reach their goals and they have their indicators. And many times we see that some of these efforts are not channeled towards the development of the communities. And so uh, being repetitive in our actions is something. And so we have objectives that can be channeled and can be directed in, a, in, a, in an efficient way. And I think we need to also uh, work a little more with the business sector, the private sector, to include uh, productive uh, sectors that can also benefit the rural families and those alliances. Uh, we also need to take into account the universities, all the academic world for research and all of that, because that concerns the rural families as well. And the innovations in technology also we can have all that applied research. So we should use everything we can use and include everything we have. We have some productive alliances, but I think we could even be better in this and we can make extra efforts to be more efficient, more effective as well. Thank you very much. I'd like to tell a story personal story, this uh, connectivity uh, issue is very critical because we have developed some plants and those and for them we need to send out some messages. For instance, uh, we need to do this or that. I mean, some activity. So when we began to understand and see where we had connectivity to understand what we should do. And so we realized that we're still lacking in the people of this of the city and you know the we know that we know the telephone operators we need to understand we need to send that message to them we and tell them the potential that we have in the farming areas and so we in the end had to resolve this and we need to develop those solutions ourselves we imagine if they start thinking that within a farm they have about 100 people which is a large farm with 100 employees for instance however they have only 30,000, 40,000 uh, cattle. And so we're talking about a city of 30, 40,000 people that before it would be understood as only something of 100 people who are accessing phone services. But now we have 80,000 individuals. Those are included, those animals that are going to be monitored, that are going to be tracked, and that are going to do a series of, wor of works there. So this is another thing that I would like to um, highlight once again it's the university thing this is academia uh go be going beyond the traditional though we're going 
beyond new careers and so on. And we have to start creating pro career programs that have programming, software, engin electrical engineering, and all of that for the farmers. Because in the end, these professionals don't know exactly what is happening in their own sector, in their livestock sector. And that's why they should usually uh, develop, uh, the farmers develop their own farming uh, programs to resolve their own problems. For instance, financing, farming credits, and all of that. So uh, they are developing, uh, programs are developed for the or urban areas. And so the people who develop that is because they can create a program or an application to sol solve the problems. But the farmers themselves don't necessarily know how to do that. And so when these solutions are created, they're created because somebody got to know that information. And sometimes you find out that a plague is is uh, a, not a problem or is a problem, and then you need to know what kind of insecticide. It's not your obligation to know all that, but the fact that we can communicate the a capacity to integrate areas, then we can of knowledge of today to to have an inter inter. Um, communication is vital between different sectors and then we can open up a tool a box and a solution box for technologies uh, for agriculture for zootechnic and for veterinary sciences and also the digital programmers and all of that can come together to bring about some solutions Josio, thank you very much and let's hear from bernardo and eduardo well in reality, we believe that alliances here in this digitalization issue uh, should be include public policy and from the Ministry of uh, Livestock and and also they need to be linked to the digitalization processes. And we as a cooperative are are part of a federation we are and we have uh, cooperatives of uruguay and that federation is also very active in trying to connect everybody with projects and alliances that include digitalization and we also work very closely with the national institute for uh, agri cultural uh, research, which is a para, para uh, uh, with the, it's a para ministerial project and we are working with digitalization and we are informed of everything that's happening. And also we have here in Uruguay, a national agency for development and that also has some promotions of public policies that have to do with developing of technology, innovation, project development and so on. Even though, well, the great thing would be to have something more focused on development of farming. As I was saying, uh, we would love to invite academia, not, not that is not linked to the sector, but everything from academia that has to do with software development and technology to start thinking about uh, solutions for that uh, farming sector. Okay, thank you very much to each of the family if panelists for their presentations and their ideas. And I think this has been a fantastic panel. And I think this table has complied with the objective. In other words, submit some kind of a balance. We know that this is a road to be trodden and we're still starting. And this is a balance as in terms of the status and where we are right now. We still have some gaps. We still have some uh, obstacles to face. And also bearing in mind that the human creativity will have some answers to all of this. And so the balance will always leave some questions and also, but also some lights in terms of the shared experiences. I'd like to highlight three, three issues that were very common. One is the integral vision of rurality, not just the, the farming activity or the cattle activity, but the 
rural territories with specific needs and de of development and sustainability and also how technology is generated to solve these uh, problems and i like the idea that these solutions are not have to be thought for the solving the problem that is generated within a certain context with an integral vision that recognizes that we are in, even improving living conditions and integration and social inclusion for the rural inhabitants and also since this is integral we cannot do this on our own because we need to get together and join forces and this is the political dialogue for designing policies for digital inclusion not no longer just to promote digitalization but to democratize digitalization and to generate other faster mechanisms for socializing everything and also uh, providing access to training and uh, technology and we have plenty to work on for uh, for the future and thank you to those of you who have shared those experiences with us one more the social agency is very important those who are main players in this process whether family farmers, individual farmers, or associates, or cooperatives, or whatever, as well as the the handlers, the managers of those in digital inclusion processes. We may have the applications, we could have the technology, we can even have the equipment, but if we don't have an appropriation of the things, and if we don't trust the inclusion of these technologies, we won't have the results that we want to have. I think this has been a very rich panel, a very, knowledgeable panel that has opened it's been like a taster right it's a motivation for us to continue to explore alternatives alliances and and put, uh, work opportunities for this uh, farming family farming sector to complete this uh, this round table i'd like to thank 664 attendees who have been part of this first day of the fair, whether on YouTube, Twitter, Twitter, and other social media, and the 352 people who actually uh, registered on the platform, who has visited, who have visited all the stands and all of the other resources that we have. This fair is within the initiative of the 1,000 global villages, digital villages, and the idea is that we accompany these countries and put them available, make them available to all those who are just beginning new processes. And so we invite you to continue to look at the fair online and to participate in the different activities that we have prepared for tomorrow, the webinars and all other sh workshops, because we we want to continue to share information and experiences and through this network that we find very valuable and from FAO, we we thank you for having accepted our invitation to be part of this process. And let's uh, invite the panelists to continue with their activities and their fine work that they're doing and share it with them, with everyone else. Thank you very much. This uh, the, and have a great afternoon.